guys, welcome to another edition of Gaming Night. Today I'm going to teach you guys how to play the Epic Spell Wars of the Battle Wizards versus uh, Nihil the Gideon. In Epic Spell Wars of the Battle Wizards, a Nihil the Gideon deck building game, you will be taking on the role of a wizard and you will be building a deck of spells, creatures, legendaries, familiars, and all sorts of things. Along the way, you will also be uh, having to worry about other legendary wizards that will come out and hurt you or the other players based on certain things as well as trying to take them down to get them added them to your deck and use them against your foes um, you're also going to want to try to knock off your opponents um, so they can get some dead wizard uh, tokens so essentially what you're wanting to do is damage your other players and collect the most victory points because at the end of the game whoever has the most victory points will become the tournament champion for the uh, Nile again tournament. So we meet at the table and I'll show you how to set up the game. So for setup we're going to start with the ability card tiles. So each player is going to get two and we're going to be setting this up for a two player game so we're going to take two random ability tiles for each and the rest of these will, go to, will be returned to the box. <clears throat> they will then select one of the abilities here and they'll choose one and the other one will get returned to the box and not looked at and so we'll just do that right now so each character is just going to do that the rest get returned to the box it's not going to be used <clears throat> next you're going to randomly deal two familiars to each player and they're going to just like before so, um, Select one and return the other one to the box without looking at, uh, without showing to anybody. So, two here and two here. So, okay, we'll look at them. Okay, so we'll take that one for example. And we'll take this one. So the rest will go to the box, not to be used. And then we will flip, they will flip over their characters. You have Venture the Party Dragon and the Drug Star the Poop Pope. Now, if you don't have those characters in this deck, then you will have to take just take a random one at so. So we have Venture the Party Dragon. And we do not have the Pope, so he'll just take the Cthulhu. Because there's some you can combine the other sets, so then you're gonna base then you're going to take your uh, skull tokens. The remaining ones not used will be set aside. And they will place it on the 20 mark, and that will indicate your starting health. So, and then you'll also place your ability face up so you can see it. And like I said, that will get tucked, like I said, right under. So we'll just turn this around so you guys can see this. So it'll look something like this, where you can see the cost of that. And you and so that you'll know what the ability is, and like I said, like that, and same with this one, just so you have a reference of what the cost is and what it does to you when you need to add it to your deck. So that's that's all there is for this part of the setup. Okay, now we're gonna set up the main the main deck. So, in order to do that, you're going to take all the cards and shuffle them up. And you're going to deal five of these cards out. And once you get all five of these out, so 
you will get these five out. If you have any mayhem cards, you will discard it and put it into the discard pile for now. You will repeat this as long until you don't have any mayhem cards. This is just for the initial setup. You'll be keeping them in play uh, later. You'll then put the limp wizard card tile here. The wild magic cards here. Whoops, sorry. I like to put them up here. There, I think they're up there. Yep. Then you're going to take the one eyed, one armed, one bald willy card, set him aside, and Based on the number of players you have, in this case we have two players, we will have eight additional legendary baddies. So we don't see what these are, we just know those are there, and this will get set there. Then you will take a <clears throat> randomly take the skull tokens here, the wizard tokens, and you will take Four, uh, four per the amount of players. So in this case, we have a four player game, so we will take eight of these skull tokens. And the rest of these will not be looked at, and they will be taken to the box, returned to the box, for not to be used. You also will set aside the um, Armageddon here. It's yeah, it'll be set aside, and as well as this, and it'll only come into play when it is uh, when you achieve, when you accomplish certain stuff. So there's that. They will now <clears throat> assemble their deck. You'll take a each player will get a single wand token. So these will get piled up. And like I said, these are going to be worth minus three points for each one of these you have. And if there's any additional facts, that so you're just going to set these off to the side where they could easily be reached within players. I just will set them just over next to the legendary heroes so they each get one wand card. Three fizzle cards. And then they're going to get six glyph cards. Six each get six glyph cards. And that's the setup. And now we'll go to show you a couple rounds of play so you can see how this game works. Okay. Now the players are going to shuffle their deck and they're each going to draw five cards. So we'll start with the, the Adventure Dragon. He drew his five, so he's got the Glyph. It's worth um, power plus one, power plus one, Fizzle, Wand, and a Power. So you can play these in any order. So now the Fizzle isn't going to do nothing, so it's just going to be set aside. Boop. And so this, to his discard side. He's got plus one power, plus one power, plus one power from the glyphs, so that's three. Plus the one, which gives him plus one power, plus you get to deal one damage to target player. So of course, since in a two-player game, the only target is going to be the Cthulhu. So he attacks the Cthulhu for one damage. And then he also gets plus one power. Now if he dies, died from that attack, I get to draw two more cards. He did not, so plus one power. So I totally have a total of four power. So you'll look down here and see the cost. Um, you can always buy a as many wild magic cards as you uh, want. They cost three. And you'll have different symbols on the card. Like these reds are attack cards. They show a cry. And then there's um, creatures, which, and these are usually, they have, this one says a defense and can be used for defense. So they have attack or defense symbols as well as other symbols in the game. So. 
only have four power, so I can buy anything four or less. You can buy as many cards as you want that you can afford. In this case, I might decide to pick up this Mega Fisting card. It says you then can, when you play it, it, you can draw a card, and if you attack, you deal six damage to the foe on your left or your right. In a two-player game, of course, you're only going to be attacking your part, uh, the one, uh, the player, and it does not do double damage. You're just gonna do, you're just gonna ignore it and just treat it as attack, uh, direct attack. And then this symbol down here it means how many victory points would be worth at the end of the game. So this will get added to your deck. You will then set these cards aside. Draw five more cards. Replace the lineup of any bought cards. If you have any in turn of effects, you can re resolve those, of course. Draw five cards to replace from the main deck to replace it. If it's a legend, um, then if the legend deck uh, has been defeated, you will flip up with the top one and resolve the on ongoing attack. Then we just go to uh, the next player's turn, which in this case is... Second player will now go, <clears throat> and of course, he's got a fizzle, three glyphs, and a one. So the same thing the other player had. So in this case, he's of course going to deal one damage to the party dragon with the one. And then he's going to have the four power, three for the thing, and one for the wand. So, only thing he can buy would be this card, or he could take a wild magic card. And so he's going to look and see, this one says, plus one power, put the next card you buy or gain on top of your deck. So he figures, long term effect, this will be good. Uh, um, he can eventually get his deck a little bit better next time. So, then he will draw his five cards. End of turn effects, if any, replenishing the deck. And you will go. And this will return, it will repeat until either a few things happen. Either the last wizard. Um, card uh, uh, tokens gone, the main deck is depleted, or the last of the legendary is defeated. And when the game ends, you're going to basically. So once you can no longer flip it, like I said, once you no longer can flip another card to fill this up to five, it's over. Dead wizard tokens gone. Or you finish these legendary. So, and that's how you play Epic Spell Wars deck building game. All right, we're going to take closely a look at some of the cards. So you're going to have different types of cards. You got these. Like I said, this is a creature card, and this can be used for attack. In this case, um, and of course, that's like I said, that's the victory point. That's the cost. Now these mayhem. If these come up, they will do what they say. So, for example. This one it comes up in line and says attack each player attack each player gains a limp one and puts it on top of their deck and this you keep doing this until you no longer have these come out so they're basically basically little uh, events that interrupt the gameplay then you have wizards they are all they like i said they'll say wizard this one's for attack that's of course their victory point is you have in your end of the game and these are what it does these are treasures They'll have a there. It says, "I'm going. You may are considered to control an additional dead wizard token. This card is worth one VP for each actual dead wizard token you control." So, and 
and then go and it'll stay in play once it's in play unless it gets discarded by some reason and then this one's a location it says ongoing the first time you play a creature during each of your turns draw a card so, yeah and then you of course you got another creature here this one's for defense it says you may discard this card to avoid an attack if you do draw a card and you may destroy a card in your hand which is good if you have like fizzles and stuff like that or limp wands and of course spells wizard babies um, attack deals to damage each players for each defense in their discard pile. So there's specific things that they can do. So over the course of the game, there's a lot of interesting cards. I'm not going to show them all. I'll let you discover them on your own. 